know if we mentioned it or forgotten. I don't know, but it is the ace match. Yeah. So it kind of sucks that this happened like in the ace match too. Oh well. What are you gonna do? Well, what we're gonna do is sit back, relax, hope all the problems are on pause, and enjoy this final game here in the finals. Again, our sincerest apologies for the tech problems preceding this, but this is game number five. Spawning here on the bottom rightmost corner of the map, we have the Mind Sanity Blue Zerg player, Soxtree. And in the bottom left, as the Red Terran, it's Liquid Tasia. Now, uh, this is the, the Game Heart mod, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know if I can watch your camera view or anything. Ah, right, because of the white no, sensor yeah. bars. You'll have to be... I can put... Oh my goodness, I can put my camera on yours. Except I'm doing a local recording, so I can't. Just kidding. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> okay. I forgot we're doing the version for YouTube on my end, because I've got all the overlay stuff, and so many things goes wrong for it, so... That's a little bit awkward, but anyways, Tasha and Sox, we've had a fantastic series trading out to this point. It's not been four quick games where it was a 10-pool into a two-racks into a six-pool or any, any sort of cheesy BS like that. We've actually had a really great set on our hands. Lots of macro, lots of control, lots of really cool counter moves, and I am not surprised we've got game number five, but the thing that does strike me odd is like I don't know who's going to win this finals. Normally, I try and put my bias aside and make an educated guess, but truth be told, they've both been playing so well. I don't know who clinches this final game, but it is in front of pools and it is horizontal spawns. And on that basis alone, I say this looks a little bit better for Tasia. Yeah, ex yes, but then it just seems to be like a curse, right? Like you'd think this is good, and there are multiple reasons why it is good. And we still see people win on it, sure, but for some reason, it's like look these positions, look how good they are for Terra, and totally Emba, and then the Zerg gets lings into the supply depot wall they bane ling bus they make this the situation this map these positions work and that's what i'm kind of wondering about like because so far has won games where he's kind of caught tasia off guard he did a 10 pull there's just a like kind of a straight up counter and then he had that attack with bane links in the first game so as long as tasia plays safe you know and so far he has you know hellions are used conservatively and you know banshees were made then I think I have faith in him taking this ace match. Well, we'll see if that goes direction uh, that direction or not. I guess the other thing for me, you know, I, I, these, I just mentioned these spawn locations might be better for Tasia, but I just want to remind everybody that this whole map layout sucks for thirds for both players. Uh, one hand for, for Tasia is going to be able to wall off and get a fortified third base, and at the same time for Saxory, there's a lot of drop potential and a lot of ways to get bounced back and forth between the high ground and the low ground around this third. There's a lot of ways to abuse this on both sides, basically, is what I'm saying. And they're both good enough to take advantage of that. So, again, it's it's really hard to call who's going to win this. But we never quite went over the bets for the series. We had 8,373 partoofs bet on Soxery, with uh, just shy of 22,000 on Tasia. So, crowd favoritism definitely seems to be leaning a little bit more uh, towards Tasia. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, he's kind Soxery of a badass. Yeah, Tasia's he's a badass. But Soxery has really good just... I like how, like, impact levels of build orders, a uh, little bit of luck, too. That's the that's why I have faith in him, is that I'm, I'm just expecting something that catches Tage a little off guard, whether it's two-base lair, so we can get the third a little bit better, or ooh, maybe ooh, a road ooh. attack. Oh, nice. I almost got the second one, too. But you got the really full, bad. yeah, exactly. You got the full health one. That queen may be going to kill that second one, and another life, another journey. But either way, that went really well for Saxory picking those off. I mean, investing in those two Reapers, it's not about the damage they would have dealt right now. And yeah, it takes that weight off your shoulders, but it's about the potential follow up. You know, you match those with some Hellions who come barreling down the middle of the map. Saxory sees this third command center as well. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you think this? I mean, look at the wide ramp. This, this map is just made for Roach bailing attacks. Yeah. I don't know. I think any type of attack is already going to be good because, like, the reason you pointed out that the thirds are hard to take. Usually, if that's the case, you want to open up something a little more aggressive. You know, attack and expand is, is usually pretty uh, safer than just expanding. And he's getting a lot of lings. Uh, these aren't going to be accompanied with bane lings, but even lings getting in here, the hellings need a wide area to actually kite them, and they have it technically. This man, this natural is very you know wide open. But, if they're caught by surprise, like on the ramp or something, then Lynx can actually do a lot of damage to them. Hellions are not buff. Well, maybe we don't need the Bane Lynx if there's no wall. Uh, this is a lot of Lynx that are just going to get in here early. Now, the problem is, it is still Zerglings, whether it's Speedlings or otherwise, okay, against something like Hellions. So, 
I was more afraid of them literally darting directly past the supply depot onto the ramp and catching the Hellions like really, really off guard. That's, but yeah, the that's Hellions are. Too. Yeah, if they're under control, if they're being micro, then these Lings should definitely not kill them, much less like end the game or do like really significant damage. Again, we have Tasia going up to this Banshee. Very cautious. I mean, if there are roaches following this up, this would be very, very helpful. Um, you still wouldn't have a wall, so I don't know if it's, you know, <laughs> helpful enough. But luckily, that isn't the case for him. So I actually did a little bit of aggression, and then went into a third. I, I'm i wondering here if... I mean, to, to, to play the macro for this, it just feels like an opportunity lost. But at the same time, maybe Saksby's not so confident and All-In would have won him the game. I mean, an All-In isn't even a guaranteed win. It just it feels like, in, especially in big tournament scenes, <laughs> referencing finals of particular events, that uh, Banelings can tend to win games more often than not. Wow, Tejo got a lot of Hellions bulked up. This Hellions plus the the Banshee could actually take down a lot. There's no Spore Crawl at the front, but there are three Queens. That's that's pretty hefty. Actually, ten goes... Ten. One goes to the third. <laughs> to Larva Inject. But what is Tejo doing with these Hellions? So, see the just things? side note, by the way, we're getting some stream things here. First, uh, they're saying there's no in-game sounds on. I don't know if you got those disabled or not. Oh, they're just really low. Oh, okay. Um, secondly, I guess unselect units more often. <laughs> I don't know. This is two, two things to relay really quick. But nice catch on the Hellions in the middle of the map. He does take out not just one or two, but almost all of them. However, he reveals how big of a Ling Swell he has. Uh, this is a little bit alarming for Tasia to see because no longer do you sit there and be like, oh, yeah, this is nothing. He starts building more bunkers, really afraid of a Baneling bus, but it's not a Baneling bus just yet. Again, there's a um, Spire on the way who's droning like crazy behind this. Soxray may have had the idea of an all-in once upon a time, but it's not happening not right now. No. I mean, this is really great. Like, it's not direct damage, right? Like, nothing's actually happening, but indirect damage to Tasia, making him really fearful. He does scan the natural, hopefully, to see maybe that spire. He's double Evo Chambers. That might be enough to tell him that's uh, no, no worries. It's. I think the Banshee that's going to scout this and tell him the most. Actually, seeing no Banley's morphed in yet, that's a pretty big tell. Yeah. Banshee. Almost dead. Well, the third base is going to be taken by Tasia, too, so not. Uh, not scared enough, I guess. Still has the bunkers ready to go. <laughs> uh, well, I do like that Bailings are coming out. I mean, you're going to need them at some point anyways. It's just the nature of the matchup. But uh, Again, personally, I'm just a little bit sad we didn't get to see the big all-in that I thought would have possibly been that uh, one-two punch to end the life for Tasia. Uh, after all, you give someone who's as good and skilled at Terran as Tasia more time, better chance they win this game. And truth be told, a lot of the times, mm -hmm. if Terran player can get that momentum going into the mid-game, they'll keep that momentum for the late game. Yeah, and this is this is something we actually get to talk about how the positions are scary. I mean, it just like seriously, like <laughs> it's not very far for the Marines to walk. And we already saw like exhibition loss the last game. Tasia like bullied his way through just by having ants crawl across the map, and that was that was less of a direct path to your opponent's base. This is really <laughs> obvious and very short. So I am a little afraid for Soxtry, but I guess on the flip side, Soxtry might be able to do more Muta harass. I don't know. Uh, this push is scary. Well, hopefully, hopefully that the uh, creep, yeah, gonna get cleaned up this time. And Tasia doesn't go for that blitz push. It is always very scary uh, coming on creep one way or the other, but he cleans up a lot of the tumors, so uh, a good chunk of map control kind of established. There's this ledge you can always retreat to. This gets nasty, oh. but here comes the Mutalist, and he can't focus them down because of the main links. Oh, quick pickup out of Tasia. But is this going to be able to hold? Uh, the Mutalists are still quite numerous, and the Hellbats, while well, training out pretty decently versus the Banelings. Oh, that one Baneling got like three Hellbats. Oh, what does he have back at home? Uh, his production is finished, like the reactors are on, but these are these are laying out one at a time, and Hatasia might have just made a really crucial error. Yeah, he, you know, that push, shoot, that was without combat shields. I was wondering why those Marines melted so quickly, but uh, trying desperately to keep this bunker alive. <laughs> it's one Marine of damage, but it will stay alive, yeah. Uh, Woodwinds are positioned here at the natural ramp, assuming that Soxer is going to take a course uh, adjustment here. We'll get a decent shot off on the Zerglings. In fact, takes nice. out all the Zerglings. Yeah, quick pickup saves the Marines from the same fate. Yeah, friendly fire. Hell of a thing. Weird to see the factory coming down over here on the left side, but I guess not to worry about it being exposed. At the same time, Soxer hasn't really replaced that creep that got cleaned up. Yeah. There we go. Now the Queen's coming. There you are. 
All right. And he also has that fourth base up. He's on 71 drones. The upgrades are actually just a little bit ahead for Soxtree, which I don't think has been the case in the last couple of games. We have a drop loaded up trying to go to that fourth, but that's a long way around the ugly face to uh, get there unnoticed. In fact, the Lings are going to take the Zelnaga. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like how that was a question. Long way around. <laughs> I like how that was like a question for you, like... I wonder if they'll touch the Zonaga, like, as they're, like, at the Zonaga. I wonder. Yeah, because I wonder if it's gonna do, like, a Baneling attack or, like, go around into the third, <laughs> like... Well, why yeah, can't it be both? Well, Baneling's finish yeah, up here barely. at the Zonaga, and... There is that bunker for defense, but there's nothing on the north side, so you could just roll through the mineral lines and possibly get some kills. In the meantime, it doesn't want to really reveal this, but has to. Rain's catching him in the middle of the map, and... Oh, he's gonna hold him in place. Back. Are you serious? I think it's still gonna die, but extends okay. the life of these guys a little bit. What am I burrowing though? The Bailings, they sneak past the bunker, they go straight for that middle line, and they get some SCV kills. But I wonder, like, mm, this is TVZ, and SCV kills at this point, five of them, not really worth it. That might have been better to just wipe out the Marine Army and let the Mutalisks be the ones that snowball, not the other way around. Either way, he's gotta deal with this drop on the right side of the map at his fourth base. Oh, drones are running for their lives, so are the Overlords. <laughs> Ooh, the Metamax is actually going to escape. There's two Mutas chasing it right now, but there's also a humongous force going to the middle again. The creep that he had just respread gets cleaned up, and Tasia, playing a little bit safe, just runs back home. Probably a good move. Uh, well, we got Drilling Claws on the way. He is getting a Thor. It's really weird to see these two being paired up together, by the way. But Drilling Claws on a Thor. Uh, everything he needs to keep producing... I, how do I phrase it? Good units. Uh, you can't just make 13 Marines at a time blindly. You're eventually going to need a Thor or two to help zone out some of the Muta shots, to <laughs> soak some of the bailing hits. <laughs> oh, Wood of Mine left behind gets a pretty nice shot off on some Lings and Bane Lings. That drop's still not cleaned up because the Mutas just simply couldn't, and that's uh, oh, too man. far away for the Lings to go help out with. And the Creep Spreading Queen does survive. It's actually very important, but the Creep still isn't. It's, it's getting pushed back. So he's just got some pretty nice wood mines too. Had that army continue to chase, but no bait being taken. And once again, starts cleaning up some of these creep tumors. It's always going to be difficult taking engagements around here, though. He's just he's got very little knowledge of where this army is poised and positioned. And really, it's actually yeah, he's going to go for the third. I was going to say he could wrap around on the army. He might just go for the third. And it looks like he is going to go for the third. And those wood mines are not going to burrow in time to get the sickest bailing hits of their lives. He just lifts up the command center and says, "Screw it." Uh, Bailings are being pulled off to the side, and looks uh, like he is going to disengage the best of his capabilities out of this. Yeah, and the drop that was timed up, uh, what looked really nicely, is just taking care of a couple of Banelings and a Spore Crawler. 17 SCVs died there, and that was finally a good attack. 84 drones versus 46 SCVs, and again, Tasia, he's not getting a, a very fast fourth at all. This is what he got an expedition lost. And funnily enough, like I feel like Sasha's doing better on a map on these positions that are so much closer. Then on Expedition Lost, where it was actually kind of far away. Yeah, it's weird to consider that, because <laughs> it's definitely the case, but I do get a little bit worried, because we keep seeing his supply take these big plummets. Now, part of this is morphing the circles into the bay, at least the other part of this is just taking these really not-so-savory engagements. Um, you know, for Soxbury's sake, he kind of has to snowball. There's not a, maybe he gets ahead a little bit, but there's no macro hatchery down this time. He doesn't have this abundance of larvae. He's not flooding and just overwhelming. And uh, the Mutalus count has thirded out, or thinned out quite a bit by that Thor earlier. It's lost about uh, five so far. Yeah. Trying to look at the engineering base. Uh, is Tejas still on 2-2? Two, two? His 3-3 three, three didn't suffer because he didn't have a 4th command center uh, last game, but now up there, there they are. Alright, he does start a 4th command center as well. It's almost halfway done. He has a pretty good defensive position with how many Widow Mines that he has. And he's trying to clear up the creep that was on top that was covering the gold base the majority of this time. Meanwhile, the Mutos do get across the map. Uh, they'll take out two of those turrets immediately. Funny to see those bunkers left up from the early game for Tasia. <laughs> Thought I would have salvaged those by now, but oh, yeah. uh, he does actually push the Mutos back. Still not taking that many workers lost. I mean, the workers lost over the course of this game isn't even that big considering how many banelings, how many attacks have gone into this third. But yo, we got Soxry going like full on snoot mode or something. Swarm hosts on the oh, way. I saw them and didn't even register. <laughs> this yeah, is awesome. I like this. I think this is really cool for multiple reasons, but of course one of the biggest ones for me is knowing that this can soak up the widow mine shots, and there are a hell of a lot of widow mines. Yes, there are. There's also just like you can just plant them in like the the most obvious attack path, that's what I'm looking at right now, and then <laughs> be pretty okay. Be pretty sure that you're gonna attack the army. A double drop did go off to the right again, to just take a very long way around, and only one dropped? What's the other one doing? 
Oh, it chill. unloaded? I don't, I don't know what happened there. It unloaded and it decided to chill out. Uh, that's a okay. lot of Widow Mines left there, though. So actually, he's got to be very careful. If he goes back in, he could lose all of his Mutalisks to one really bad move. Two Thors as well on top oh. of the Clumped Up Mutas. Oh, he's going to oh. take out a good chunk of them. I mean, uh, the one thing we haven't really acknowledged, Tasha has been investing in vehicle upgrades while this has been going on. Not, not often does that happen uh, so consistently, but coming up in 3-3-3 three, three, three across the board, this is going to work out really nicely for dealing with the Mutalisks, who, by mm -hmm. the way, have almost no upgrades into them, just the plus two, plus two, plus two, because everything's stuck on layer tech. He's not been able to get to Hive, well, he did finally get to Hive, pardon me, while well, this has been going on, but the investment's been going to the Swarm Host and not continued upgrades. Mm. Up to about, uh, what's it going to be, 13 Swarm Hosts stuck in the middle of the map. Tasia never really wants to trade out with them. That is going to be free units for, well, not necessarily expensive bio units, but still, you know, paid for units. Putting up the creep on the very top side. Uh, Sox has actually been pretty decent at replanting the creep in most situations. Well, the uh, Swarm Hosts haven't really come into great effect yet, but that doesn't oh mean God. they won't. <laughs> There's so many Buddha Mines of that fifth. Or fourth, sorry, for Tasia. Okay, they all move. Kind of necessary, though. Not so much for the middle is, but against the circling rumbies. And the bailings, they barely get to connect to a small portion of the Marines. However, here comes the Locust Wave. Now, for Tasia's sake, the problem is, well, with all these Marines bleeding out, he doesn't really have the power to push through the Locust Waves like you normally would. There's no tanks behind this. Uh, we got visual Ultralists coming up behind uh, as round two. Meanwhile, Saxory is desperately trying to hold on to his expansions that keep getting knocked out by these uh, small drops, but very importantly, annoying drops. Yeah, no Ultra's cover. There, there it is. Uh, he's starting to cover the top bases, I guess. Maybe aware that Teja couldn't take in a secret one with these Overlords. A little funny. Because, yeah, actually, Teja did. What, what game was that? Like a TPT or something? I don't know, but we are we are getting the late of the late games right now, so I'm going to open. <laughs> Yes, what do I on the front lines are going to get that instant burrow? Can they go off on the bailings? Mostly go off on the locusts. That's the intended goal of the swarm hosts. No, I'm just saying. I'm feeling a, a really pretty good for Soxter here. Now, Tate is too, finally yeah. making more headway than he has in most of this game. He's directing his forces to the north. Going to start attacking against the uh, the bases that still have minerals. Everything else is kind of mining out right now. Ooh, off of Creep rushing into these Marines, desperately trying to connect. Goes Ooh. off into the Thors instead. Big mistakes are made out of Soxer. However, Locust coming from behind will finish off two of those Ooh. Thors. No! Tasia picks one up with almost no health remaining! Oh, the Marines are like, pick us up, pick us up. <laughs> Alright, the Thors finally do die, and the Marines are picked up in the Medivacs, but where do they really go? I mean, there's... Well, Tasha. If they can unload, they'll oh. be fine. But hang on, Tasha catches the swarm host not only when they were on cooldown, but out of position. So, as the Marines stem in, ah, uh, he's not going to be able to get those executing shots he was looking for. Soxery's going to hold, but he loses his position into the north because he drew his army back. And once again, we find him with so many lanes, but no banelings. Where are those mutalisks? Zombie Grub, he actually oh, lost them all. Yeah, he's replenishing them though. That's a good move. Like forgetting to remake Needless or thinking that you don't need them as later the game goes on is a huge mistake. You absolutely need them. Tarantulas drop you everywhere. Oh man. Well, just because this is going on so late, I want to quickly remind everybody that uh, while well, WCS will be starting up shortly, we will make sure to host it immediately after the uh, conclusion here of the Olima League. So you can stick around and enjoy our chat if you have been, not get banned in WCS chat and all that jazz, or you can go over there. But. Um, fully acknowledge the time that we're currently at and it started late because of my connection yeah, a little bit oh my god the snipes and the bailings are almost really really good but he still saves i mean this is actually like a really Ooh, natural base though natural base though gets on top of this ultra scavenger gets on top of possibly the upgrades if he gets the bailing nest that's gonna be pretty critical but he goes for drone kills instead not a bad choice uh picking up though to get out of there I uh, down to 10 swarm hosts, but 15 mutas. The ultras, there's only two or three popping out. You know, this was a pretty big idea, uh, pretty big deal. Getting creep on these bases, trying to deny Tasia's expansion. Well, this one missed quite badly, oh but uh... <laughs> Tasia's abusing this position so nicely at the fifth. Yeah, oh, I love it. The high ground, low ground, unloading. I'm loving it. I kind of at the same time though for Sox, I wish he'd get some static defense up. Maybe I'm not saying spine cars would stop it, but it would buy him the time to respond and not quite. Get as wrecked as it's been going. Uh, the Ultras will soak some of the one of my shots, actually unburrows them to not even waste them. That was well, kind of a clever move. That seemed like a waste of Ultras. Yeah, I am not sure on the dedication for that. But Sox, Rian, Tasha are still pretty much maxed out. Both of them, yeah. 
I guess Tasia's the one with a bit of a bank, but not by a whole lot. Ooh. That's what I was going to bring up. You know, Tasia had, or rather, Soxtry had this really big bank, of course, because the Swarmos were working out and he was defending all of his bases. But, you know, losing units here and there to these drops and bases here and there is a really big deal. Oh, Ultralis, please stop getting blocked by that queen. This is it's actually looking worse and worse. It looks like the game is like just spiraling out of control for Sox. Like it's not really like game ending or anything yet, but you can tell like the momentum's no longer in his favor. Right. And Tage is going up to a sixth base with his main command center. The you don't want host, orbital get away. I think the biggest problem is right now these swarm hosts are actually a huge waste of supply. It's not that they're not baiting Widow Mine shots or anything like this, but he's not been able to use them effectively because the army's constantly been maneuvering around them. So because of this, that's that's a good like 40 supply something Soxry has in units that are just not helping him this game. Now, by choosing to leave these up here with maybe some banlies to cover and then use the Ultras and Mutalists to attack, that might be a cool move. But right now, the way it stands, you're right, Tasia's been the one getting more and more control the later this game's gone. Okay, I was gonna say, like, three, three Marines were left over if they got the Ultras cover and have been so angry. <laughs> that would have um. been very sad, yes. Oh, uh, I guess he was checking for a greater spire. Definitely something you have to worry about. Even then, though, like, the way that he's playing this game is good against swarm hosts, and as such, they're good against broodlords as well. He probably would have been okay, you know, Ooh. as long as there weren't, like, 12 broodlords. The, fun the fungal growths are nice, but there's no follow-up to them. I'm, I'm dead. I'm 100% dead swarm. serious. If Soxry had some more money, it would be completely worth sacrificing the swarm host. He's not really getting good use out of them at this point of the game. That money, that gas, those minerals, those could all be meatless and be about 100 times more effective. Yeah. Ooh, Ultra Swarm. Alright, again, just kind of... For Soxy, these are very expensive units you cannot easily throw away. Yeah, and he I has been throwing like them away. I mean, we never like Ultras, right? Like, no, <laughs> get out of the way. Yeah. But especially on such a big map, it's usually not the way to go. It's better than Broodlord, sure, but still kind of dangerous. And just the way that he has been well, playing know. has not been favoring him. I don't know that those would be better than Broodlords in this map. There's a lot of cool ways I can see that you could abuse it with that southern half of the map especially, but... Oh, well, like, the, yeah, the high ground, the low ground, yeah, I can see that. Well, Fungal's uh, gonna go off and he'll get a couple of kills, but this has just been getting worse and worse for Soxry, who has tried to... How many times now has he had to retake this base? Is this, like, the fifth time? He, yeah, something like that, but, you know, he still is... Actually, yeah, they dipped down pretty low from Max. I was gonna say, he's getting kind of a scary army, the type that maybe just like one Hail Mary push could do something if they haven't been producing, you know, Widow Mines or maybe the Marauder Count isn't that high. It's getting to that point, and Soxby's finally, well, I don't know. It looks like he's gonna gear up to push. There's a huge army up on top that's just not gonna be part of this attack, and if he can get to the production, maybe can something happen there? It's a big if. But I, I agree. Like if he could whittle his way in there with the swarm host with the with the ultras, maybe, maybe, maybe. But for the first time in this game, or not the first time, but the first time in a long time in this game, he's finally turned the the tide around. He's kind of given up on defending and says, "Screw it, I'm not taking that base. I'm just gonna go for the attack." And in doing so, he finally starts using these swarm hosts. But at the same time, it is giving up the rest of the map. And it, uh, inadvertently, this isn't all in because for Soxry's sake, there's no going back home to defend this effectively. He's already lost the base. He's going to die to the Marauder Fire. He's lost the additional base he took up here to the north. And there's no mining at his other bases. In fact, he may not be able to replace this hatchery because he just oh. won't have the money for it. He actually saves the hatchery. I'm not sure how that happened. Tasia goes after Queens instead of killing the hatchery straight off. But then goes into the main. The mutas are still out. So this isn't going to be an absolute kill move. In fact... Well, actually, it's not that many mutas, though. I don't know if he can oh, actually yeah. save this. No Meanwhile, 15, only on a nine. Long distance mining from the gold. You know you've fallen in hard times when. <laughs> uh, this game went really well for Soxfree. For a lot of positive things I can say about this game, this game should have gone much better for Soxfree, but looks like Tasia is pretty much on the verge of finally getting that killing blow in. That nail in the coffin just getting hammered down, and Soxfree cannot get any army supply for his life. Delta 122 overall supply, 86 to 122. I mean, there's just. There's no support for this. A couple of investors, Fungal Gross will not save him in this game. Yeah. I mean, Tasia has a, has a great economy. Yes, he's three bases are mined out, but he's still on two healthy ones with a third all in the way, and you can always transfer over these orbitals. Hey, yeah. tearing things. Um, it, I, the problem I see for this is even if he gets the sickest Fungal on the entire army, there's just no way for the Ultras to engage. There's too much damage here. One of the key things, I don't know if everyone's been paying attention to this, but Tasia has been constantly, not once or twice, but constantly unburying his Widowmine so as not to waste their shots. Even just now, when Sox is trying to bait out hits with the Infested Terrans, quickly unburrows them and makes sure they, they do not go on cooldown. Yeah. Let's remind everyone this is the ace match. Can't put scores on because 
because reasons, <laughs> okay? This is the ace match of the finals, and it looks like it's going to go in a favor of oh, Tasia. He gets those, those perfect fungals. Those fungals fantastic, but they're too late. Oh, they just barely don't Can kill you them imagine, right. like, two more fungals? Oh, God, oh. Tasia is going to clean it up. T three to two. Oh, congratulations to him. Now, um, normally, guys, again, I saw a lot of complaints come out of this. Sadly, the thing is, Zomgrub is 